Welcome back to another edition of Rob Sports Center. As you can see by the title, man, yes, I'm back with another Larry Bird tutorial video. I know you guys been loving these videos, so I decided I was gonna go ahead and finish it out and give you all the videos that um, he did with Larry Bird. But as you can see by the title, man, this is Larry Bird teaches you how to play the post even if you're small. So like I say, it's ways around things. If you, um, like the connoisseurs of the games, people who dig into the little small details, those are the ones that's able to make exceptions to whatever the so-called rules to the sport actually are. But you know how I do over here, man. I ain't gonna talk to you guys to death, man. But before we get into this video, do me a big, 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 big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel, man, make sure you subscribe. If you're watching my videos and you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And one more thing before we get into the video, man, if you're a bird fan, I'm talking about you're a really bird fan, go to the comment section. I wanna see team bird, team bird, team bird, team bird, team bird, team bird, team bird. Let's get into this video. Who do play the thing? Who should play the thing? A lot of people think that the, the big guy's got to be in the pivot. Why? Because you're close to the basket, and he's going to get a better opportunity to get rebounds. Than the smaller guy. I don't buy that. I think the guy that... That's just like for guys who might not know anything about boxing. It's a thing called boxing where it's called a long guard, right? And a lot of people think that you have to be a taller fighter to utilize the long guard. You don't actually have to be. If you go look at, if you go look at Javante Davis, if you're a fan of boxing, he'll show you how you're able to utilize the long guard as a short, short fighter. So like I said, it's ways around everything, whether it's basketball, football, uh, boxing, UFC. Wait, you know, you got to go and do the research and find it. If he feels, when the other team is playing man-to-man, -man, that he can take that guy inside and do better, if he's 6'3", and the guy's guarding him is 5'8", or 5'10", he can take him inside, has a better match than two seven-footers going at each other. Every time um, a opposing team that tries to run a play against us, and we switch out or something, and we can get that mismatch, automatically we try to go right to it. I remember years ago, they had little guys who were the leading pivot men in the country. But today, with the importance of this pivot play and everybody double teaming and sloughing down, it makes the outside shooters better. Hey, you became a pivot man. You've been in there a lot lately. Yeah, I try to, when I go down to the pivot, I try to draw the double team so guys like Danny and DJ get the open shot. But if they don't, um, with my size, I usually have the advantage of the guy guarding me, and I try to take advantage of it. If not, and a double team comes, I just swing the ball around the open man, and uh, we try to get an easy shot out of it. Another word. Like I said, I was trying to, not trying to hit the rug on Bird while he was talking, but I think I said that in, a lot, in one of my reaction videos in the past, that I think that sometimes Bird is actually looking to pass over shoot or score. It was the pivot play. But like listen to listen to the key word what he just said. Whenever he goes to the pivot, he's looking to pass, right? So what have I told y'all that playing with birds you gotta have? Eyes in the front, eyes in the side, eyes in the back, and eyes at the top because you just never know when the ball is coming and you just never know how it's coming, but it's coming. Basically should be the focal point. Because he can come out and set a pick where you can have a pick and roll, which we'll explain. Uh, it, it opens up everything out on the court. Kevin is a great post player. Oh, he's got uh, every move. They double, triple team in, but nobody in the NBA can That was three people. That really was three people. Any post man, get down on the box as close to the basket as possible. So when you receive the ball, you can take the highest percentage shot you can take up there. So in the game, Robert is going to stop me. He's going to get in front of me, bump me, and it goes something like this. I'm coming down here, I get in here, I set him up, I try to... Now one thing too, two things he just said, high percentage shots, right? That's something I always speak about when it, in terms when we talk about old school basketball versus new school basketball because of the how late the three-point line was implemented that that wasn't a high percentage shot. That's why a lot of people didn't take them, right? You look at today's game, they just have a free fall for shooting. And a lot of times that's contested shots. So technically, regardless of how long the three-point line has been implemented, it's still not a high percentage shot because you got a man hand is directly in your face. Now, going back to what I wanted to touch on when I when they were showing when Bird was like, whenever he goes to the, the pivot, the post, that he's looking to pass, right? So it, it shows too that 
a part of Bird, a part of being a leader is communication, right? So Bird teammates already know. So if he's saying this in a training video, you think that he hasn't sat there and told his guys, like, hey man, check this out. I noticed that on this play, on whatever I go right here in this post, in this position, this particular position, they're double teaming me. So as soon as they double team me, man, you cut to the basket, that's easy two points for you right there. You know what I mean? So like I say, it's the small things that make these people like Bird, Kobe, Magic, Mike, um, all these greats, like that, it's the small things that makes them so much greater than their competition. You know, and it's not because of athletic, it's not athletically greater, it's mentally sharper, mentally greater for the game. You know what I mean? Cut in front of him. He slides around. I feel his body right here. My hand goes out. It's um, easy. Basket. That's easy. Here's a good That's example of how faking the pivot can be used to get the defensive Three man people. up in the air. Three people. Let's hear how Kevin executes. This kind of maneuver. Hey, he still scored the two. Okay, that was well, like it was blocked. Well, Robert, Robert's a very good defensive player, so I want to make him move. I'm thinking to myself, if I just go up and shoot it, he's going to block the shot. So I'm pushing here to the middle, making him respect that. Coming back, I'm, right now I'm giving him the head fake because he's in good position. I see him go up. I'm thinking to myself, I got him on the way down. I go up for my jump hook, and that's two points. Robert overplays Kevin to the baseline, so Kevin knows the signal for the ball towards the baseline. As soon as he touches the ball, Kevin spins to the basket for an easy two. If Robert tries to prevent the pass by fronting Kevin, I try to lock the ball over Robert and try to lead Kevin to the hoop. It's a rough pass, though. By now, Robert respects what Kevin can do if he gets the ball in his spot in the box. So Robert cuts him off. I see this, so I throw the ball to the middle. And Kevin has the ability to take a fall away shot that's almost impossible to block. And gets him out to do all these moves, they become almost unstoppable force in the Right. Side. You, you can score from any position. I'm starting position. to now. I'm starting to widen out. I'm starting to call him from the ball. Here Larry does a, makes a good move to get Danny off of me. He makes a ball fake. He comes up high with the pass. I, I receive the pass. I see Danny coming down. I do have the option to kick it back out to Larry for the jumper. But I feel confident now in my move. I have a step through, make the defensive man move. I go up, extend, use the board with the jump hook, and two points. When Ralph Parrish is in the post, I'm going to be honest, me as a coach, I would tell them, if he's in that post, we're going to have to just take that two point from Mikhail. Do not drop down to assist him and leave Bird over. That's a recipe for disaster. So what would you rather take, three, or would you rather take two? He uses his quickness very well for a big guy. Here, Danny waits for Robert to call for the ball. And Robert, as soon as he has control of the ball, spins around, keeping contact with the defender to go in. As Kevin fights Robert for position, Robert knows Kevin has got to respect both the baseline and the jump shot. So this time he fakes to the baseline even as he gets the ball. Then he spins all the way to the middle for a hook shot. Danny knows that the defensive man will often watch the ball and take his eyes off of his man. So here, as I'm guarding Danny, as soon as he throws the ball, Danny makes a quick move to the basket. Robert sees he has a step on me and dishes off for Danny for an easy two. That's the importance of moving without the ball. Kevin gets the ball in position. But he draws a double team. He quickly looks back out to see if I'm in good position to take the open shot, and he gets the ball right back out to me. Here, Kevin, after getting his position against Robert, gets the ball down low. But he sees that I have height advantage over my man. So Kevin dribbles out, clearing room for me to establish a post position. Kevin sees Danny overplaying me, so he leads me to the baseline for a quick spin to the basket. The pick and roll. And see, it's like even looking at this, man, it, 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 it's showing me that a lot of, you know, what led to a lot of, you know, bird success too was, like I said, man, was just teamwork and communication, man, working together. And it's like, it's a term that we always use because um, I'm a football guy, by the way, too. 
So it's a term that we always use. Um, it's like dominate your individual matchup. And I seen an interview where Michael Jordan was speaking about, you know, just working together in teamwork. And Michael Jordan was like, I believe that when everybody's working together, those individual accolades are going to sort themselves out. You know what I mean? Just because of the success of teamwork, the overall team, because we're working together. And that's like, that's the embodiment of what it is to watch the Boston Celtics. You know what I mean? You look at Larry Bird dominate, but then you look at like how everybody feeds off of each other, how they get out on fast breaks, how there's communications from even just watching this video and showing clips of what they actually do to where it's not, okay, they just doing this in a tutorial video, but it's showing you that this is stuff that they actually do in a real game. So when I said that Bird, when he threw that pass, and I was like, man, that's a hard pass to make. He actually done that in a real game. You know what I mean? So it just shows that working together, you know, it leads to individual success, um, success as well. You've heard it many times. We're gonna show you how important it really is, how two men can be the major part of any offense, all the good things that can happen with this pick and roll. Let's watch it. All right, now wait a minute. Now you see what he does? Kevin comes in here to set a pick on Danny Ainge, who's playing the defense on Larry. His elbows are out. He's got good balance. He does not hit Danny. He sets the position. Larry Bird uses Danny on his move. He fakes here, and then Danny goes into him. That's how the pick and roll must be made, and that's how any pick or screen should be made. On the pick and roll, I got Kevin and Danny. Danny's defensive man, Kevin's offensive man. I got so many options off the pick and roll if it's ran right. I got uh, Kevin coming over, setting a good hard pick on Danny. I'm gonna fake baseline, take a couple dribbles. If Robert falls me out so I don't shoot the jump shot, I got Kevin with Danny on his back, and all I have to do is lead him to the basket with the ball. The other options that I have, if Kevin comes over to set a hard pick on Danny, Danny fights over the pick, I come off, Kevin fights his way down to the post, I got a little bounce pass to him to try to lead him to the basket. Another one is, Kevin comes over, sets a hard pick, Danny trails out, Robert follows Kevin, I come off, take a couple dribbles for the jump shot. The other option I have, which is a good one, if Danny sees a pick coming, he anticipates a pick and jumps out, I fake to the pick and drive baseline for the layup. Or the man that's setting the screen can fake the pick and break to the basket. The last option, which is probably one of the toughest one to do because there's two picks involved, is Kevin comes over and sets a pick on me, Robert jumps out, I can't go anywhere, so I fall back to Kevin, set a good pick on Danny, throw to the basket for the layup. Communication, man. I've seen that in a lot of the, you know, a lot of player oh, bird highlight videos that you utilize this. Well, now you've seen the offense. How do you stop it? Let's watch it. But hold on. Now, in defensing the pivot, the first thing you try to do is not to give the offensive man the spot that he likes. Robert is guarding Kevin McHale, therefore, he knows he likes this spot. He won't give it to him. Can you take that away from him? All right. Now, Larry has the ball. Make it, make it now you go on the pivot. How would you play him? Now, you notice he's on the side. See, some coaches always stay on one side. We don't do that. We like the idea of staying on the side until the ball gets in the middle and then Robert can help out in case anybody's driving through the middle. Now watch Larry where he moves. When he's got the ball there, Robert is here. Mm -hmm. Now move, uh, Kevin. All right, now he's moving again. Now if Larry gets in the middle, he's got to go over this guy and fight him and take the other side. Now also, come back here a second. Robert knows that if Larry throws a high pass, he'll get help from the offside, from the weak side. One of his players will help out. But if by chance he does it wrong and he gets on the other side, give me the other side. See, now all he's gotta do is yeah, lock him in yeah. and go in for a hook right there, there and he has no chance of any help. Yeah. 
So that's why you play on this side. You don't give him the baseline. All right, let's go through that one more time. It's almost the equivalent to my own football fans of when you're a cornerback, right? Your objective a lot of times is to push the receiver inside. So it's like you want to give inside. You want to always utilize outside leverage because outside leverage, nine times out of ten, he's coming in. He's not going out towards out of bounds. Like I heard a guy say, a coach say earlier, the out of, out of bounds is undefeated. We already know he's not going over there. Now, obviously, I don't want to get beat over there and, uh, and, and give him a chance of stacking me over the top. So I want to push him inside. Where is inside? Inside is where a lot of my help is at. Nine times out of ten, it's where linebackers are at and it's where the safeties are at. So it's like if I get beat, I got help. If I get beat on the outside, there's no help. And if it is help, it's probably going to be a 20-30 some yard game before he's actually stopped. That's if we can get to him in time. Now watch Robert on this. He's there. He's there. Now watch him make the move. There. Now that's the way you've got to pivot. Remember, first thing you do, don't give him the spot he wants. After that, make him work. Stay on the baseline side until they get to midcourt and fight your way over and get on the inside. That's what it's all about, man, as a defense man. As a defensive player, it's all about making an offensive player uncomfortable. Taking away what he's what he's good, what he's best at. The best that we can. Now I say you're gonna be able to completely eradicate it, but just try to minimize it and make him work and put him in more uncomfortable position, the most the more uncomfortable position, the position that you possibly can. But as you guys can see, that is it for this video, man. If you did enjoy this video, do me a big, big, big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel or if you're watching my videos and you haven't already, I don't know why. If you've been watching my videos, you've been coming back to back. Make sure you subscribe and subscribe. Make sure my post notification bells are on. That way you know the follow on all things Rob Sports Center. Because just like the GOAT, Drizzy, Drake say, and just like I say in every outro, what? I'm coming back to back with these videos, man. So y'all see y'all in the next video.